Well, it's official. Quest 3 has been fully revealed at the Connect event and you can now pre-order one with the current shipping expectation to be October 10th. So let's get into everything we now know with certainty, some of which we suspected via links and some of which were newly revealed. My thumbnail might be viewed as slightly clickbaity, but I'm actually quite serious. So watch to the end and you will understand where I'm coming from. We are going to start with the layout of the Quest 3 as I finally got some clarity on a few questions I had. First off, the Quest 3 will have four inside out tracking cameras for the controllers, two on the bottom sides and two on the front panel in those little pill shaped sections you see there. There are no cameras on the top as we've come to expect of many of these VR headsets. So this configuration is new and I've actually heard about this happening and the word is you don't actually need cameras on the tops as most people won't move the controllers so high that they will be affected. Once my Quest 3 arrives and I've had a chance to do some testing, I'll be able to speak more clearly on how effective this configuration is versus what we've been used to. In addition to the two inside out cameras on the front panel, there are also two RGB cameras there as well with an 18 PPD, which is a 10 times the resolution of the Quest 2 and a 2 times the resolution of the Quest Pro in pass-through mode. In addition, on the front between those cameras, there will be a depth sensor for accurate depth projection and room mapping. On the bottom, you will find the IPD adjustment wheel, as we were expecting. And as you're adjusting the IPD with that wheel, you will have a display inside the headset that tells you what your IPD number is, just like the Quest Pro. IP adjustments for the Quest 3 ranges from 58 millimeters to 71 millimeters, which are an improvement over the Quest 2s and comparable to the Quest Pro. Moving to the other side, on the bottom you will find three dots which are charging for use with the charging dock you can buy separately from Meta. If you have the Quest Pro, you will be very familiar with this feature. And next to that is a volume control. Moving on to the left side strap, as you are wearing it, you will find a type C port and on the right side, as you're wearing it, is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It's nice that it will have a headphone jack, but I'm not sure yet how I feel about just the one and the placement of it. For comparison, the Quest Pro has a headphone jack on either side of it and it is under the head strap, which feels more intuitive and less likely to get in the way. Again, I'll be able to draw a more firm conclusion once my Quest 3 has arrived and I've had some time to play around with it. You will also find a depth adjustment on the Quest 3 where you can easily adjust the facial interface closer or further away from your face to improve comfort and field of view to quote meta, but more importantly to adjust it to accommodate the wearing of glasses for all those glasses wearers out there. For audio, you will find the speakers in the standard locations here and per meta, you'll find integrated stereo speakers with 3D spatial audio which places you in your space with 40% louder audio range, bass range, and optimal left-right matching capabilities to quote Meta again. So basically it sounds like the claim is louder and higher quality audio versus probably the Quest 2, maybe the Quest Pro. We will see once I've gotten mine and had a chance to test that. As you can see, this thing is very slim and one might expect it to be lighter than the Quest 2, but while it's actually a 40% slimmer package than the Quest 2, it actually weighs in at slightly more at 515-ish grams versus the Quest 2's 503-ish grams. But fear not, due to its slimness, expect it to be quite comfortable to wear and actually feel lighter than the Quest 2. The reason for its sleekness is actually the pancake lens that it has, similar to the ones you see on the Quest Pro. Those pancake lenses are rocking a resolution of 2064 by 2208 per eye, up from the 1832 by 1920 per eye on the Quest 2 and the 1800 by 1920 per eye on the Quest Pro. As a Quest Pro user myself, 
The Quest Pro lenses are quite fantastic as there's a lot of tricks Meta does to boost that picture quality from the base resolution. So I'm looking at the increased base resolution plus all that extra stuff I expect them to do and I'm quite excited to experience the end result and how good that picture will look on the Quest 3. The Quest 3 doesn't let up with the refresh rate either. You're looking at both a 90Hz and an experimental 120Hz option which is what they did with the Quest 2. Interesting note here is I make the case for this being a Quest Pro killer. The Quest Pro doesn't have 120Hz be it experimental or not so keep that in mind. For its FOV or field of view this was the one I was very pleasantly surprised to see. Mainly because Bosworth had made the claim that the Quest 3 FOV would be similar to the Quest 2. Well, as it turns out, thankfully, it's not similar in any way, shape, or form. With the Quest 3, we are looking at an FOV of 110 degrees horizontal and 96 vertical. As a comparison on the Quest Pro, I measure roughly 102-ish horizontal and vertically and on the Quest 2 I measure 90 horizontal and 96 vertical. So if these numbers are accurate we are looking at an FOV increase over both the Quest Pro and the Quest 2 which is just fantastic. One more nail in the Quest Pro coffin here. As a PC VR headset which is really where my interests lie. This thing is still standing toe to toe with the Quest Pro as it also will have a Wi-Fi 6E enabled opening up that glorious 6 Hz frequency just like the Quest Pro. I've been using the Quest Pro for a while now as my daily driver and using the 6E I have found that I've been able to play some games wireless that before I'd resorted to wiring into my PC to play so the fact that the Quest 3 is getting it as well makes me really 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 happy. You will of course still be able to wire into your PC using the Oculus Link cable but for me once you've gone wireless it is hard to go back. Battery life you're looking at around the usual depending on use case so what two to three hours? I personally plan to just connect my usual external battery which I'll keep in my pocket which basically allows me to play easily 8 to 10 hours nonstop. I'll link that in the description. If you're not using an external battery though and you drain your headset, you're looking at an approximate 2-ish hours of recharge according to Meta's tech specs. All this glorious goodness is being powered by the Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 chip and that chip will have 8 gigabytes of DRAM to work with. Meta is claiming it delivers double the GPU processing power leading to faster load times and more seamless gameplay as compared to the Quest 2. So no doubt if you're coming from a Quest 2 this will be a significant step up. If you're coming from a Quest Pro like myself I fully expect it to be a decent step up from that as well. Touching briefly on that DRAM of 8GB that is more than the Quest 2's 6 but not as much as the Quest Pro's 12. It would have been nice to get the full 12 and I think a headset like this would have benefited greatly from it but at least we're getting a bump over the Quest 2's. For controllers these things are small and sleek and basically look like the Quest Pro controllers except they don't have their own tracking cameras and their own chip to track themselves just like the Quest Pro controllers do. They are tracked using the inside out tracking as we've come to expect of many VR controllers except they don't have tracking rings and instead the sensors are in the controllers themselves and since there's a good chance these sensors could be blocked for a variety of reasons the headset will also be using the hand tracking system to assist in keeping track of the controllers. Basically both of these systems will be working together to always know the location of the controllers. So far Everyone I've seen that got to use them say they work really well but you will be able to pair the Quest Pro controllers to the Quest 3 and use those as well if you wish. Keep in mind you are looking at an extra $300 though for the Pro controllers if you don't already have them. All this sweetness and we haven't even talked price yet. Well we are looking at two storage options. 128GB version going for 
any 512 gigabyte version going for $649.99. If you pre-order either of these options, you will get a copy of the game Asgard's Wrath 2 when it launches, which is looking like in December-ish. And if you get the 512 gigabyte version, in addition to that game, you will get a six month trial subscription of MetaQuest Plus, which is basically a subscription service to get access to games. At the beginning of this video, I made the claim I would make the case that this was a Quest Pro killer. What do you think? Did I do it? Every feature the Quest Pro has, it looks like this Quest 3 can do it better with the exception of face and eye tracking, which the Quest 3 won't have. But really, at this point in time, face and eye tracking really feels more like a gimmick to me. And so I'm not really concerned that the Quest 3 won't have it. I have pre-ordered my Quest 3 and I went with the 512 gigabyte version. And once it arrives, expect a box opening slash impressions video as well as a complete breakdown and much, much more. So subscribe, click that bell to be notified when those videos go live. And tell me in the comments, are you excited for the Quest 3? And do you have plans to buy one yourself?